Good morning. All right, there's a couple of us. We are so glad you chose to get up this morning and come and serve God and be with us here at the Stony Run Church. We hope you are welcome. If you need anything, let us know. We're here to uh, make you feel welcome. We want you to just feel like you're in, in with family. We just want you to receive from God today. We do have some announcements that we want to cover just to make sure we're all on the same page. To this evening at 6 o'clock, we're going to have our business meeting, our annual business meeting, so please uh, make plans to be here for that. We've got our uh, prayer meeting coming up tomorrow night like we do every uh, every Monday, so please be here for that. It'll be at 7 o'clock, and uh, we want you to be involved in that and be plugged in. It's so important to gather together with believers. I mean, you know, when 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 you need to spread news or something, you tell somebody. So in the same aspect, when you need prayer for something and you want God to move upon it, you need to tell somebody. You need to let people know. So please be here for that. Don't forget our, our virtual uh, meetings on Wednesday night. They are going awesome. Uh, they're packing the house out. No, I'm just kidding. Obviously, there's about six of us here. But that's good. We got Pastor uh, Joy and Pastor Rick here. So, and we got we couldn't do it without our audio video folks. So, uh, please join in for that. It, it, they're just giving such good teachings and things that just change your life forever. Um, now, the youth we're going to be having a lock-in coming up this Friday night. It's going to be from seven to seven. It's for middle schoolers and above. And at seven o five, we're locking the doors to keep them in, and at 7.05, we're unlocking them and letting them out. So if you're not here by about 7.15, they might be here by themselves, so uh, Saturday morning, that is. No, we're going to – we love to hang out with the kids and, and let them grow in the Lord. There's going to be lots of food. There's going to be – but they're going to be fed spiritually. You know, there's going to be praise and worship. There's going to be teaching and that kind of thing. We're going to play games. We're going to have fun, so – Please make plans for that. If you need transportation or something for your kids, uh, let us know. Uh, but we'll help you out any way we can. We do have a baby shower coming up uh, next Sunday. It's going not next Sunday. It's when is it, Carrington? Next Sunday. It is next Sunday. Y'all make plans for that. It's a floating shower. It's for uh, Maddie and Dennis Kelly. It's going to be from two to four. So. Um, float in, you know, if you need to float around a little bit, but however you need to do that, uh, they would richly appreciate your blessings on that uh, new addition that's going to be coming, so please make plans for that. Now, we are going to be accepting uh, new members coming up, um, and what we would love for you to do is if you want to join the church and uh, be a part of our church membership, our church family, uh, let somebody know on the staff, they can... Uh, get you plugged in and, and get you any kind of information that you need. Uh, we are going to be doing a joint baptismal service coming up, and that's going to be on the 14th of March. That's going to be at 6 o'clock with Blackman's Grove Church. So, you know, what an awesome time to join the church. If you need to be baptized, why not go ahead and get that done then? We would love for you to be a part of us in every way, shape, and form. So we're going to do something a little different this morning i'm going to ask everybody to stand we heard a request that some of our folks that have not been able to attend with us miss getting to see our faces miss getting to sh you know show their appreciation so if i can have everybody to kind of turn and face this camera over here on the right and give yeah, that one on the right get 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 pastor's good side character wave at everybody <laughs> that's for the folks that aren't able to be here we love y'all we miss y'all god bless you now, uh, we're going to remain standing. We're going to go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer and uh, just seek God's blessings upon this service. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercies, dear God. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning, dear God, for waking us up in our right mind, dear God, that we're clothed, dear God, that we're fed, that you are always providing, dear God, whatever the circumstances, whatever the needs, we know that you are able. Father, we pray your blessings upon this service, dear God. Lord, we pray that you would help us to be in one body, one mind, one accord, dear God, walking towards you, dear Father. Lord, we pray that you would help us to lay aside mistakes and failures of this week, dear God. Lord, help us to see you in a better way. Lord, there's so many people that are affected in our church body by sickness 
and disease that need a move of God in their lives. Lord, we pray that you would touch them this morning right now. Father God, we pray that those that are not able to be here because of circumstances, whether physical or whatever, that are watching on Facebook, dear Father, we pray that you would let them feel your love, dear God. Know that we appreciate them and we miss them and we hope to see them soon. Lord, we pray your blessings upon this service, Father God, upon the praise and worship, dear God, that it would kindle our hearts, oh God, that we would be drawn closer in you. We feel your presence, Lord, and we pray your blessings upon our pastor today, Father, as he spent time with you, as he studied and poured himself into the word, that the word would come forth, dear God, and we would hear lessons that would change our lives forever. Father, we thank you for everything that you've done. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. For us in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. 
There's a bridge that we sing on the song that says, um, you turn mourning to dancing, you give beauty for ashes, you turn shame into glory, you're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens, you turn bones into armies, you turn seas into highways, you're the only one who can. And that comes right out of scripture in the Old Testament. God did those things. And I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he did it in the Old Testament, he can do it today, and he can do it in me, and he can do it for everyone if we just trust in him. So whatever it is you're going through in your life today, take this song to heart because God turns graves into gardens. I 
I search the world But it couldn't find me Man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough Then you, then you came along
better than you, Lord, there's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for turning graves into gardens for us, Lord. Thank you for being there when we need you for whatever it is, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I was sure by now, God, you would have reached down and wiped our tears away stepped in and saved the day but once again i say amen and it's still raining but as the thunder rolls i barely hear you whisper through the rain i'm with you and as your mercy falls I raise my hands and praise the God who gives and takes away. And I will praise you in this storm, and I will lift my hands, for you are who you are, no matter where I am. And every tear I cried, you hold in your hand. You never left my side, and though my heart is torn, I will praise you in this storm. I remember when I stumbled in the wind. You heard my cry, and you raised me up again. Well, my strength is almost gone how can i carry on if i can't find you but as the thunder rolls i barely hear you whisper through the rain child i'm with you and as your mercy falls i raise my hands and praise the god who gives and takes away and i will praise you in this storm and i will lift my hands for you are who you are no matter where i am and every tear i cry that you hold in your hands you never left my side and though my heart is torn I will praise you in this storm. I lift my eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I lift my eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven. I will praise you in this storm, and I will lift my hands, for you are who you are, no matter where I am, in every tear I cry, and you hold in your hand, you never left my side, and though my heart is torn, I will praise you in this storm.
that we can praise him. That still small voice, we talked about it in Sunday school. I've heard Rick talk about it with that still small voice when you're going through a storm and you hear you hear that still small voice, I'm with you. I've got you. I'm, sometimes it don't feel like it, but we can praise him through our storms. go. I'm on the ball today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I believe that God's got a word for us today. And I, I, I've noticed something over the last year or so. I guess it's almost been a year, maybe longer, that there's so much negativity in this world. I mean, it, it's just like I've never seen it with the negativity in folks. And, and, and the sad part is, is that it doesn't just come from the world. I expect it from the world, y'all. I may expect the world. The world doesn't surprise me with anything. I expect negativity. But what I don't see is I don't see the church walking in a positive light. I hear a lot of negativity. I hear a lot of um, defeatism. I hear a lot of, um, you know, well, it's just going to be like that. And that's all. I'm here to tell you that uh, we serve the most high God, y'all. Amen. I mean, he spoke the universe into existence. And, and if I can't rejoice over anything else, I'm going to rejoice in that. Today, I got a, got a title for you because Carrington always wants me to have titles. So staying positive in a negative world. Staying positive in a negative world. Um, we're surrounded by negativity. If we listen to some people, we just need to go ahead and crawl under a rock and hide for about the next four years. And I ain't going under a rock, y'all. I'm on the rock. That's right, brother. I stand on the rock. Amen? I'm here to tell you that in a dark world, in a dark world, the light of Christ shines the brightest. Amen? There's darkness all out there. We should be bright light. We should be white hot. It should, it's so dark out there right now that when you walk into some place, you should light it up with God moving through you, the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want to read from Matthew 5, 14 through 16, just to kind of throw this out there, because I think that we forget the simple stuff sometimes. Remember the, the, the basics. Remember the basics of, of who we are. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. It says this. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. The light's not coming from anywhere else, y'all. It's supposed to come from us. And the light that comes from us is nothing but a reflection of the light of Christ who lives in us. We are the light of the world. A city that's uh, set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Father God, I just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus today, Lord, asking that you would help us to fulfill what you've called us to do. Lord, you've called us to be a light, to be a city on a hill, to be a people that can light a room with the light of Christ. That everywhere that we go, that although we are cracked and broken and, and flawed vessels, Lord, that it is the light of Christ that shines through the cracks in our lives that we might illuminate everything and everywhere that we go. And Lord, that we would walk as the children of light, that we would walk of the, as the children of Christ, as the, as the children of the Most High, as the ones who are joint heirs with Jesus. 
And so, Father, I just ask, God, that you would just enlighten us, God, or make us light or whatever it takes, God. But, Lord, that we be the light of the world. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I, 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 just, I just feel like we've got to get some positivity. I feel like we've got to, we've got to live up to our, our birthright. We've got to live up to, to who we are. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm bought and paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Nothing in this world can hold me down, praise God, because I, I have eternal life through Him. And then we've got to get past all of this. Quit looking at, through the eyes of flesh at all the bad stuff out there and start praising God for the good. Amen. Start talking about who you are in Christ. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I ask you today, are you shining bright? Or are you like a light that's had a wet rag thrown over it where everywhere that you go, it's gloom and despair and agony on me? Y'all remember that show, right? Oh, I just need a board to hit me in the butt, right? I used to love watching that show, amen. But that's the way I feel that we are sometimes. You know, gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I've had no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. But that's what I feel like sometimes at the church. Of all places, y'all, this is the last place that we should have gloom, despair, and agony on me. This should be the place where we are the light of the world. That we, we can light a whole house when we come in. We can change the atmosphere by the power of the Holy Spirit of God that we all claim that we walk in. Hallelujah. Well, I'm here to tell you that He is the light. And when you come in, things should light up. Light up a room with Christ. I'm not saying you change circumstances. I'm not saying that you walk around like you just, you know, I'm talking about having the living God in you, that you know that it's different, that you know that there's something there, that you know that you stand upon the rock, that you know that you are a follower of Jesus Christ and you are a light bearer. And I'm here to tell you this today, or maybe ask you this, if we don't shine brightly in this world, who will? Because it ain't coming from out there, y'all. There's no brightness out there. There's darkness out there. There's dark. We are surrounded by darkness. If anything, this should be a city upon a hill. This church this morning should be a light post, something that everybody in the community can look and see the light of God here, that it's something new, something different, not what's coming from out there, what's in here. And we need to understand that. And so when we try to stay positive in a negative world, we need to remember who we are. Who are we today? I'm a blood-bought believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I have been forgiven of my sins. I've been washed. I've been cleansed. I've been given eternal life through Him. That's exciting. That's exciting in a, in a negative world. In a negative world. I wrote a little thing here. I got, got it sideways, but it's okay. I can still read it. It says this. Our positive outlook in a fallen world comes from our position in Christ. I want you to think about who you are in Christ. Amen. Don't think about what the world's telling you. Don't think about all those other things. Think about who you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you remember what you were before you knew Him as your Lord and Savior? Do you remember? I remember what I was. And I was in a dark place. I was in a dark and a dreary place. I was lost as I could be. And when I found the Lord, hallelujah, the, the clouds parted and the sun came in in my life. And all of a sudden, I had a different outlook. We got to understand that. That we are the light of the world. Redeemed through Christ Jesus. That we're to go out and shine light. And like I asked earlier, if we don't shine brightly in this dark world. Who will? Who's going to do it? Amen. Everybody. <laughs> Lord asked Isaiah, who will go? Right? He said, here I am. I'm ready to go. Are you all ready to go? You ready to go out in this world and shine light in dark places? Light it up. Light it up. I'm here to tell you that you will change the world by the light of Christ if we will light it up. 
But we got to understand how to stay positive because, see, it's so easy to go negative. It's so easy to complain. It's so easy to, to have, a, have a bad outlook and to just, just, to, just to throw your hands up and say, there's nothing we can do. But through God, all things are possible. Amen? All things. And we just have to, we have to believe that. And, and, and I believe that, that our beliefs should change the way we, we live. It should change the way we approach things. It should change the way we think about things. It should change us completely. Our walk with Jesus Christ should change everything in our lives. And so we need to, we need to hang on to that. So today I want to preach out of Philippians chapter 4. So if you all would turn there with me, Philippians chapter 4. I, I, want, to, I want to do about five verses there talking about staying positive in a negative world. I just feel like that we, there's so much negativity. There's so much out there. We've got so much that we can, we can be thankful for. We, every day, just getting up every day. All of y'all, we got here today. Amen? Thank you, Lord, that I got here today. Thank you, Lord, I didn't get in a wreck on the way here today. Thank you, Lord, when I got out and got in my car this morning and I turned the key or mashed the button or whatever you have to do nowadays. Right? Because I don't even know anymore. Sometimes you don't even have to you just push a button or whatever. I still have keys. And I can take them out of my car when it's going down the road. That's pretty neat, huh? <laughs> yeah, it kind of scares me sometimes. <laughs> but, yeah, I can pull them right out. My, my, my key's worn out. When you got in the car this morning and you turned that key, mashed that button, that car cranked, and you rode down the road. Hallelujah. And not only did you ride down the road, but you had gas in the tank. And you were able to get here, and you were able to get dressed, and you were able to come. All these things that we can be so thankful for, that people all around the world, that they don't do that, and they don't have that. We are absolutely highly favored and blessed here in the United States. Whatever's going on, we are highly favored and blessed. We live in the greatest country there is in the world right now. In the world right now. I don't care what's going on politically. I'm here to tell you, God has placed us in a highly favored place. That's where we're at. And we need to live like we're in a highly favored place. Amen. Philippians chapter 4. I want to start in verse 4. And I'm going to just read five verses and then we'll just back, uh, go through and kind of, kind of expand on some of this stuff. Philippians chapter 4 says this in verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. I, I like that word there. If you want to start the day out, in a positive way, man, just turn to Philippians chapter 4 and start reading. Start reading. Allow the Word of God to change you. The Word of God is alive. It's powerful. It's mighty. It can absolutely change our thoughts. It can reform our minds. It can change our outlook through the power of the Holy Spirit. All kinds of things that can happen. But we've got to believe what we're reading. Amen. We got to believe it. We don't just have to. I mean, we, and we've got to not only believe it, but we've got to receive it. We've got to take it in. Well, let's look at this for a second. The Apostle Paul's writing this. The Apostle Paul was probably the most persecuted Christian there's ever been in the history of Christianity. I mean, he had all kinds of things. I mean, he was, he was beaten. He was, he, was, he was stoned with rocks and left for dead. He was shipwrecked. He was robbed. He was thrown in prison. He was, all these things happened to him. And yet this is the man that's telling us this right here. This is the man that wrote this Philippians actually from the prison. So this is written from a prison, y'all. And not nice prisons like you have Domino's Pizza and TV and everything to watch nowadays. A prison, a hole in the ground. No bathrooms. Let me think about that one for a second. Stuck in a hole in the ground. And Paul writes this. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice always. 
Always. What about when things are going bad? Always. What about, what about when things are not going according to the plan? What about when I'm brokenhearted? What about when all rejoice in the Lord always? And, and, and the thing is, is that, that it, it was almost like he knew what people were going to say. Like, I can't rejoice right now because there's just a lot of bad stuff going on. He says, again, I will say rejoice. I told you rejoice, but you're not listening. Again, I'm going to tell you again. Rejoice. 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 We have every reason to rejoice. We've been bought. We've been purchased. We've been redeemed. We've been forgiven. We've been granted eternal life. Does that mean anything? Because it means something to me. It means that no matter what happens on this whole fallen earth, hallelujah, there's going to come a day when I'm going to leave this world, praise God. I'm going to be changed. I'm not going to be what I am right now. I'm going to be changed, and I'm going to enter on into heaven, and I'm going to go on those streets of gold, and I'm going to, I'm going to see things that I can't even imagine, that I can't even wrap my mind around, that there's an eternity waiting for me. Hallelujah. I'm excited about that, y'all. It excites me, and I rejoice in that, thinking that, that the, the alternative of what I used to be was an eternity in damnation. And now I've got eternal life. He gave it to me. What did I have to do? Receive it. You know how to pay anything? Just have to receive it. And believe it. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. If you have a choice, rejoice. Amen. <laughs> if you have a choice, rejoice. If you have a choice, rejoice. I mean, allow, allow, allow yourself to rejoice in the midst of all this. Look, there's, there's things about, about what's going on that, yes, it, 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 it's disheartening. And we look out and we see how fallen the world is. But then we can also see how awesome Jesus Christ is beside it. Beside the fallenness. We get to see that. We get to understand who we are in Him. Rejoice. I mean, we could just stop there today and we could just rejoice a little bit. We could just thank God for the fact that we're able to pay our bills, that we're able to, to do everything that we do in this world, that we're ha we have good health right now, that we're, that we're sitting here together today, that we're able to have church, that we've got a building, that not only do we have a building, we've got heat. That's cool. That's awesome. We got heat. We have all these things. We're in Texas today. You might not have heat. You might not have water. I mean, God's that good to us. Rejoice. Verse 5 says, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. I want you to just hang on to that section right there. The Lord is at hand. He's here with us where two or three are gathered. Hallelujah. In his name, he's in our midst. He's here with us. He says, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. He's not gone and he's right here with us. The spirit of God is in us. The Lord is at hand. And I'm here to tell you whatever you're facing right now, understand that he is on his way. He is here. He's at hand. He's not somewhere far off. He's right here. Live as if the Lord is at hand. Not as if he's way off yonder someplace, but live as if he's right there with you, walking with you, because he is. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. I mean, let's take some of this stuff serious. We talk about, do you, do you literally read the Bible? Do you believe that stuff? Yes. And if you literally believe it, then you can literally take these things. When Jesus says, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age, that means he's here. He's with us. He's with us. Live as if the Lord is at hand because help is on the way. He can be coming at any moment. I want you to understand something. The rapture is imminent. That means it's not waiting on anything. There's nothing that's got to be fulfilled. There's not going to be anything. We can, the rapture could take place right now, right this second. The Lord could call us home right now. It happened right now. Live like you would want to be found if Jesus came in the next 30 seconds. Now, how do you want to be found at Christ's coming? H how do you want to be found? Because <laughs> there's one place in there where it says, will he find faith when he comes? 
I mean, we've got to, we got to ask ourselves that. You know, we, we need to live as if the Lord is at hand, as if he could come at any moment. He's, he's just waiting. He, help is on the way. He's, he's, he's coming, and he, it could be any time. And we need to live like it could be any time. Take care of the things you need, care, need to take care of now. Don't put it off till later. Take care of the things that you need to take care of. The Lord is at hand. He's, he's with us. Paul's, you know, rejoice. And if, and if you don't listen to me, then rejoice. <laughs> he says, look, be gentle to, to one another. Love one another. The Lord is at hand. And then he goes on and he says, okay. He says, I understand that the world is a hard place. And man, there's so much anxiety out there right now, and folks. I mean, they're just upside down, backwards, and sideways. And I mean, I honestly believe some people would go crawl under a rock and just live there until the storm passes. I'm here to tell you, we're not called to put, put our light under a basket or under a rock or anything else. We're supposed to pull that light out brightly and be a city upon a hill and light the room wherever we go and show people that we have faith in Jesus Christ, that He lives in us. I mean, we need to, we need to live that out. We need to, we need to show people that. Because I'm here to tell you, you can say all you want with your mouth, but your mindset will give you away. When you're negative about every single thing in the world, and then you say, well, you know, you just need to trust Jesus. And you're like, whoa, you ain't trusting him. All this negativity. Hallelujah, my Lord. <laughs> oh, man. Woo! Be anxious for nothing. Don't allow this world to steal your peace and your joy. That's what he's telling us. Don't let the world steal your peace, your joy. Don't let the world steal that from you. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. Wow, that's a hard one, isn't it? Everybody worries. I worry too. But when I find myself worrying, then I need to stop myself and I need to start praying. Because it does no good to worry about anything. You can absolutely change your life and your circumstances through prayer. Stop worrying. Start praying. Don't worry about everything, anything. Pray about everything. Give all your concerns to the Lord and let Him handle it. And He will. He will. He'll handle it. He will handle it. Hallelujah. If He can save my soul. Praise God. If he can raise on the third day from the dead, if he sits at the right hand of the Father now, hallelujah, if he spoke the universe into existence, then whatever we're facing right now, I promise you it is small potatoes for the God we serve. Our problems are very small compared to our great God. And we need to understand that. So let him handle it. Hallelujah, Lord, I've got concern about this. Okay, Lord, I'll tell you what, you handle it. Amen. Give it to God. Let him handle it. And don't take it to the throne of grace. Don't take it to the cross and leave it there. And then when you walk out the door today, run back real quick, grab it and take it with you. Leave it there. Let God handle it. Let him handle it. First Peter 5, 7 tells us this, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. He cares for you. And I'm not talking about just sentimental caring. I'm talking about he will take care of you. God will take care of you. He'll take care of you. We need to understand that. Remember this, and I'm going to say this again. Our positive outlook in a fallen world comes from our position in Christ. Look, we know who we are in Christ. I am in Christ, therefore, He has got me. The Lord's at hand. We need to live like He's here with us. Amen. Not like we've been thrown out in the wilderness all alone and we're hoping, oh, I hope the Lord can. He's here. He's here. Live like he's here. Live like he's here. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Notice that part, thanksgiving. I'm here to tell you that if you will start practicing thanking God every day. Get up every day. Look, you may hate your job. Then you need to thank God that you have a job. Amen. Because it could be worse. You could not have a job. Amen. You may hate the house you live in. Praise God. I thank you for this house. Hallelujah. Because I could be outdoors. 
right? Everything that we have. You know, we may have sickness in our life. Well, praise God, I'm still here. I still got another day. Hallelujah. I've still got it, and I'm going to praise him. But I'm here to tell you that gratitude in your life, if you want to experience the joy of God, you first have to give God gratitude for what he's given you, and then joy will be the natural outcome. If you're down, start thanking God. Thank him for every, just start ticking. I know you can find something to say, I ain't got nothing I can thank God for. Yes, you can. If you got breath in your lungs, you can thank him. Hallelujah, I'm still here. Start there. But you got to have gratitude. And if you'll, if you'll express gratitude to God about what you have got and what you're thankful for, then the joy will start building in your life. And you'll start getting joy. I'm not talking about happiness. Happiness depends on circumstances. Right? So many people, they have circumstantial faith because when the circumstances change in their life, their faith goes away. I'm talking about joy that's beyond circumstances. I'm talking about joy that's, that's beyond anything. Anything. It tells us this in verse 7. It says, and the peace of God. Oh, my goodness. People talk about, if I could just find peace, if I could have peace, I need peace. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God, it will guard your hearts and your mind. But we've got to give all our cares to God. We've got to, we've got to give it to him, and then we receive the peace of God. Okay? That's the whole idea. If you don't have to worry about something, you won't. Right? Isn't that the way we work in our lives? If, it, if somebody comes to you and says, well, hey, what about this, Rick? Well, I ain't worried about that. Why not? Because I'm not in charge of that. How many things do we worry about in our lives that we're not in charge of? That we can't do a thing about? Right? We, we need to let that stuff go. Don't worry about that. You can't do nothing about that anyways. Let it go. Let God worry about those things. Let God handle those things. You handle the things you can handle and you let God handle the rest. We give all our cares to God, we'll receive the peace of God. And the peace of God, the, the, it's not just something like a, <sighs> although that would be nice at times, right? If we could just kind of take a deep, <sighs> oh, the peace of God. But it says the peace of God will guard our hearts and our minds from all that. From what? From those those fiery darts that the devil's throwing all the time in your life that there, there's stuff there all the time that the devil he, he's like a fisherman he's, he's slinging darts he's slinging lures he's doing whatever he can to try to take your peace so that you won't feel the peace of God that you won't feel and walk with God as you should he's trying to steal that from you and if he can steal that from you through worry and through concern then he will stop you in your walk but the peace of God defies understanding it says it surpasses all understanding and i'm gonna tell you i don't know how it works but it works you all know what i'm saying have you ever you ever experienced the peace of god have you ever experienced peace in the midst of a terrible storm in the midst of something i heard rosemary i heard you talking about it this morning when you had your heart attack that day you said i just had a peace that was the peace of god that passes all understanding because you don't understand it. I'm having a heart attack here. Right? This is not normal. Hello. I, I need to get to Rex. I need to get to the... I'm at the wrong hospital. Everything's going wrong. What do I... I need peace. And <laughs> Rosemary said, I had peace. It passes all understanding. That's the peace of God that will guard our hearts and minds if we'll allow it. Peace of God, it transcends understanding. It goes beyond the limits of understanding. You can receive harmony and calm, calmness of body and mind and spirit. It supersedes our earthly experiences and our circumstances and everything we see around us. God can just stop it all and give us peace. Look, if, if, if that was just the one thing that I got from salvation, it would be worth it. That I could just walk through life with peace. Like, okay, it doesn't matter because God has me. Amen. And, and that's faith. That's faith knowing that God has me. God has got this thing under control. I don't understand it. I feel like everything's totally out of control, but God has got control. The peace of God forces out. It takes the place of our earthly circumstances. It starts shoving it out so that we don't hang on to those things. But in order to stay positive in a negative world, we got to make sure that we're not meditating 
on the wrong stuff. You say, what do you mean meditating? I mean that you just consume your mind with something. When we meditate on the word of God, we're just filling our mind with the word of God. When we meditate on the worries of this world, we fill our minds and consume ourselves with the worries of the world to where we're absolutely consumed. We are meditating on the bad report instead of the good report. Y'all, and that, that's, that's defeatist. That's, that's terrible. What, what's the word of God tell us here? Paul says this. He says, finally. It's kind of like, okay, I, I just want you to understand this. Finally, finally, finally. Finally, meditate on these things. Spend time thinking deeply or carefully about what God has really done for you. What, 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 what do we really have in this world but God, y'all? Anything else can be taken, but we have God. Hallelujah, that can't be taken. He can't be taken. I am with you always, even until the end of the age, we've got that. That's something we need to meditate on that. We need to, we need to make sure that we spend the majority of our time thinking about good things, about the things of God, and not about the bad things. There's plenty of bad stuff out there, y'all. We could just break down and go for weeks at a time and never think one good thought and not hit all the bad stuff out there because there's a ton of bad stuff. But Paul says this in verse 8. He says, finally, if you don't do anything else that I've told you, if you don't do anything else, finally, if you don't do anything else that I've told you, do this. Do what? Meditate on truth. People tell you there's no truth in this world. There is absolute truth, hallelujah, and it's contained in the word of God. There is truth there, y'all. Everybody doesn't get to have their own truth. This is the truth. Amen? That's the truth. So you, get to, you only get, this is it. Amen? You believe this Bible from cover to cover, then that's the truth. There is truth. Meditate on noble things. Meditate on just things. I mean, all these things, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Paul, Paul's telling us this, you know, look, look, you got to get your mind on the good stuff. Quit, quit letting the bad stuff devour you. Because the bad stuff is just going to bring you down in defeat. It's just going to leave you, leave you wanting. When we meditate on the good things, we allow those things to change who we are. And I'm here to tell you that you can literally make yourself sick by how you think. You can physically make yourself sick. And I know people that worry themselves sick. And some people worry themselves to death. Literally. It depends on how we set our minds. Our minds are supposed to be renewed by the things of God, by the word of God. That's why you need to read this Bible every day. Because it renews your mind. It changes how you think and how you perceive these things. Verse 9, Paul says this. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. Paul's telling us to... Do as I do. Remember, where is he writing this from? Prison cell. Nasty prison. He says, look, if you'll do what I do, the God of peace will be with you. And we could all say, you know, it could be someone writing it from someplace else, but it was written from a prison, y'all. It's not like he was on vacation somewhere saying, oh, it's so good to be on vacation. Nobody's bothering me. I'm hanging out on the beach and just reading my word. No, he's like, I'm in a stinking nasty prison. I don't know when I'm getting out, but I'm stuck here in this hole. But I'm here to tell you, hallelujah, that if you will do the things that, that I've shown you, if you, will, if you will do these things, then the God of peace will be with you. I was trying to figure out what was he meditating on in that prison that was so good. I mean, what was it? Well, they fed me once today, praise the Lord. I'm still here. The sun was out today. I could see the sun coming through the bars today, just barely coming down in there. It was beautiful. I mean, I, I just, y'all. So how do I stay positive in a negative world? 
How do I let my light so shine before men that they might see the good works and glorify our Father in heaven? Remember this. Rejoice in the Lord. Amen. If you uh, look, if you want to change your day, just start rejoicing. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You know, I used to get upset. Y'all, when I get the bills out and I start paying the bill. Okay? Y'all can y'all know what I'm talking about here, right? You all got bills, right? They don't they don't give you nothing for nothing, right? You got to pay for everything, okay? Well, you know, some months you get all the bills out and you got them all laid out. And remember back in the old days, I used to have a big roll of stamps because we used to mail everything. And now I just click buttons on my computer, but same whatever. They still get the money. They just get it faster. But I used to lay all them bills out. And I would sit there and I'd be like, gosh, I got 10 bills. Uh, man, I only got $1,500 and I got 1800 in bills. Oh, well, let me see. Now, I can pay this one. I can pay that one. Remember back in the old days when you could mail a check to someone you knew it would take at least two weeks for it to clear? <laughs> can I get a witness? <laughs> Amen? Yeah. yeah. And then if it, if it hit early, you're like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> How did it get there so fast? I need to mail it to that other mailbox over by the dentist office next time. It takes longer. <laughs> right? But I remember those days. I remember having to, to, to be like, I have six bills. I can pay four. Which ones do I need to pay? Okay, well, I'm going to pay these four because I know they're not going to shut it off. Or, or you know, or it's, it's going to get shut off if I don't pay these. And I, and I know that if I don't pay that one, they'll let me slide. And I got a few days. And we would do all that stuff, right? But, but here's the thing is that then I, I, I sit down. Who has too much money here today? I don't either. And so I paid the bills the other day, and I was, I was paying them all. And, and I looked, and, and I, had, I had $150 left. And I was like, man, this is terrible. I ain't got, Todd, I didn't have but $150 left. And that's when the Lord, in that still small voice, said to me, Rick, did you pay all the bills? Yes, Lord, I paid all the bills. Well, then thank me and quit whining because you only have $150 left. You got something left. And see, that's what we need to understand. Rejoice in the Lord. Amen. I got one rejoicing on the second row. Praise God. We're training up that child in the way he should go. Amen. But if Jesus really saved you, then rejoice as one who's been saved and snatched from the jaws of death by Jesus Christ. Amen. Be, be one that, that rejoices. Rejoice always. The second thing is live as if the Lord is at hand because he is at hand. He's here. He tells us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Look, no matter what you're walking through, no matter what you face, the Lord Jesus Christ is with you. The Holy Spirit of God is in you. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And know that. Live as if he's at hand. Not, not you're hoping that he's there. Praise God. I can stand anything if I know he's there and he's holding my hand. My buddy says that when you get, get really, really in a bad way and, and you feel like that you, you just can't go no more, he said, just stick your hand out. And I said, for what? He said, so you can hold the Lord's hand. And I said, well, praise God, I'm going to stick them both out. People look at you like, what's wrong with you? Just holding the Lord's hand. Live like the Lord is at hand. The third thing, don't worry about everything, anything. <laughs> don't worry about everything, absolutely. Don't worry about anything. Look, you, you're going to worry, okay? But you need to give your burdens to the Lord. If you think about it more than a couple times and it's still working, you need to just let it go. You need to go ahead, get in your prayer closet or shoot a prayer out or whatever it is. Lord, take this from me. I don't need this anymore. It's like the little kid I saw at the restaurant, and he sat down at the table, and there was a steak knife in front of him. And he looked at that steak knife, he picked it up, looked at the waitress, and said, My mommy says, I can't have this. <laughs> Your worries. My Lord says, I can't have this. Turn it loose. And it's easier said than done. 
But look, my, my toes are already all mashed off today, so you ain't gonna worry about it. I mean, but don't worry about anything, everything. Give, give, give all your burdens to the Lord in prayer. He, I love that song. Remember we used to sing that song when we were kids, He's got the whole world in His hands. Y'all know that song? Isn't that crazy how some of these little songs like that, He's got the whole world in His hands? Well, He's got the whole world in His hands, y'all. And we're included in that whole world. All our mess is included in that whole world. He's got us. Don't worry. He's got the whole world in His hands. Fourth thing, spend the majority of your thought time on the good things in life and not the bad things. And I would suggest this ratio. You know, you want a ratio? Everybody wants to know how to do something, okay? Well, let me tell you how to do something, okay? What you do is for every one bad thought, go with three good ones. Go three to one. If you're, if you're dwelling on something bad, that's fine. Okay, now the next three things you concentrate on, you meditate on, you meditate on three good things. One-third of the time, worries the world. Three, or the rest of the time, the good things. Focus on the things that are noble. There's still noble stuff in this world, y'all. There's still good people out there. Praise God. There's, there's good stuff out there. It's out there. They don't report it because it doesn't sell. But it's out there. There's still good things. People are still noble. People are, are still just. People are still pure. They're still lovely. There's still good report out there. There's still virtuous activity. There's still things that are praiseworthy out there. And you've got to find those things. Use that three to one rule and, and, and take three times as many of those good things to put in your mind. To the one bad. And if you'll do these things. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. How to be positive in a negative world? Praise God. Know who you are in Christ. Amen. And, and, and concentrate on that. Focus on that. Don't focus on that out there. Focus on, on the one that will not leave you nor forsake you. Sister Pat, you guys got a, a closing song for us today. Amen. Praise God. He's got something out of this. He's on fire today. <laughs> His muscles. Amen. Let me see him, brother. Let me see those faith muscles, man. Come on now. Come on. Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be in the house of God? Amen. Amen. Pat, would you like him to stand today? Yes, that, please. Would you all stand with us today as we close out today? Amen. And I, I do want to let you know that this altar is open. I mean, if you if you got worries, concerns, burdens, things that you need God to deal with, and you just want to turn it loose, you know, sometimes we need to do like a, an actual act, you know, where we have to move or, or actually uh, do something that, that symbolizes us turning something loose. Maybe today's that day where you're like, man, I, this, I've been struggling with this thing, and, and I just need to turn it loose. Maybe today's your day to get free. Amen? To get free. If it is, and you feel like you need to come down here this morning, like, just come on down to the altar and allow God to just take whatever. Just give it to Him. Say, Lord, I'm going to give this to you, and I ain't taking it back. Amen? It's yours. Praise God. That's what Gina's daddy told me when we got married. He looked at me. Didn't he, baby? He said, Hey, big boy, she's all yours now. <laughs> I can't, that's right. He says, I ain't taking her back. He said, when I said, her mother and I, that was it. She's yours now. Give your worries to God like that. But you can't take it back. Don't take it back. Give it to him. Let him have it. I'm telling you, you, you will, your whole life is going to change. You're going to come in a more positive feel, and, and the negativity is going to go down, and, and you're going to start feeling the joy of the Lord, and you're going to start smiling, and people are going to be like, what's wrong with you? And you say, man, I just, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, sis. No height or depth can separate. Your steadfast love who can escape. So far.